America dumps. industrial machine of the United States of America, a production capacity unexcelled in the history of the globe. In the great pulsating, throbbing, productive heart of the nation, tremendous ultra-modern plants strive to measure up to the exacting standards of an atomic age. America demands the best, sleek, streamlined models for an age of jet-propelled speed. Expert engineers turn their genius to the task. Magically, the swift-moving units speed along great assembly lines. A touch here, an adjustment there. Details too minute for the unaided eye. Tangible demonstration of American know-how. And then, up, up, on great conveyors that make light of tremendous loads. As if in the tightened grip of some great fabricating giant, our units speed on and on to fulfill the purpose for which they were created. Next, a gleaming dark-colored finish, impervious to wind and weather. Beautiful, yet affording sure protection against the bite of the elements. But milady may prefer something more subdued, less garish. And so we have a soft, opaque camouflage finish to melt the sternest feminine heart. And down the inspection lines they go, symbols of perfection, the highest product of man's industrial genius, the donut. And in Swank Bistros and Spas, Mr. and Mrs. America are taking covetous looks at the models of their dreams. Shiny, glistening beauties to titivate the most Catholic or the most discriminating taste. A man and his wife can think seriously once again of indulging in the once archaic but now flourishing medieval sport of dunking. Fundamental equipment for the sport is within reach of the average purse. Besides the spoon and the all-important donut itself, a well-balanced, good-quality cup supplemented by a serviceable, impervious saucer is essential. And important to dunking as the donut itself is a reliable source of high-quality coffee. Today, the law-respecting citizen with a healthy desire to dunk can hold up his head in polite society. Establishments to minister to his needs are operating even in the most restricted, exclusive neighborhoods. Such men fear no opprobrium of society, poised and assured, they may be observed indulging their favorite pastime in every American city, town, and hamlet. Healthy augury for the future, surely. A free man in a free world, free to dunk. Actual dunking, contrary to popular impression, is a careful, precise operation. The donut is broken squarely in half and painstakingly immersed for exactly two and one half seconds, never for longer. Improper dunking is among dunking's cardinal sins. If the two and a half second limit is exceeded by the tyro, the delicate cohesions of the cellular structure are disturbed and the consequences are catastrophic to customer and counter alike. But in marked contrast to the social dunker, the gentleman dipper, and target for most of the criticism leveled against the sport is the uncontrolled dunk. The wretch who can't take one crawler and quit. The dipomaniac. In reality, these persons are sick and should be hospitalized. Too far gone to be aware of his nauseous, insalubrious effect on more ethical dunkers, the dipomaniac will go to any lengths to satisfy his fiendish cravings. Eatery entrepreneurs join in society's uneasy concern with this menace, and alarmed reactions greet the dunk's every appearance. Lacking proper legal recourse to limit overindulgence, the average proprietor is helpless to meet the menace of the douse and his hyper-eager craving. Frustrated and confused, the restaurateur takes the easy way and resignedly caters to this sick and helpless flotsam and jetsam of the social sea. One look into the face of such a derelict is enough for the practiced observer. The glazed expression, the sagging cheeks, the nervous twitching fingers tell an irrefutable story. 
Psychiatrists and researchers have been forced to devise an entire new clinical vocabulary to categorize and describe the various manifestations of the dipomaniac urge. There is the depraved practice of immersing an entire donut and swirling it fatuously with the fingers. This has been dignified by the pathological term digital diving. Sometimes only a portion of donut may be used, but the diagnosis remains exactly the same. Another symptom of unsportsmanlike conduct observable in the earlier stages is the use of a fork. This is referred to in dunk parlance as stabbing and dabbing. And the most pitiful manifestation of all, just before final coma, two-handed dunking. Increasing numbers of dunks are also complicating the problem of equitable distribution. Sometimes the normally polite, refined social dunker is driven to ruthless action to combat the menace. But at such critical times, will the public accept half measures? Almost as rare as the dodo bird a few years ago was the sight of a respectable woman in a donut den. But today, increasing numbers of American women of breeding and refinement are cultivating a taste for the sport. But the depraved dunk is no respecter of persons, male or female. Modesty, sensibility, mean nothing to such a creature. A resolute woman will not be deterred from her enjoyment by momentary embarrassment. Gamely, she will strive to maintain her poise, to explore the unknown in a manner befitting a person of refinement and taste. With spirit and elan, she sails into uncharted seas. But alas, when faced with a situation beyond her control, she may react in a manner quite foreign to her usual mean. Confronted by the antisocial specter of the dipomaniac, the most venturesome female soon yearns for the comfort and security of home and fireside. How different, how contrasting is the picture of the true sportsman, the polished social dunker. Eager yet perfectly controlled, rapid yet smooth and polished, the true gentleman enthusiast makes of dunking a high art. By a smooth flowing elbow motion more than anything else, is the true blue dunker distinguished from lesser fried cake fry. Every gesture precise and expert. Fingers, too, gracefully extended and poised, characterize the cruller connoisseur. With gentility and refinement parts of every dunker's technique, the United States would not be faced with a growing national problem. What to do about Duncan derelict? Human wrecks adrift on a Java sea. Too deeply mired in depravity to care about a future destiny, the victim of over-immersion, deep in his cups and saucers, dips through life, a burden to family, to community, and to nation. But a shimmer of hope has recently gleamed through the black curtain of despondency with formation of an organization of ex-dunkers dedicated to helping dipomaniacs such as they themselves once were. An altruistic self-help brotherhood society the double S, sinkers, synonymous. And none too soon, for across the country opposition groups are rising, militant, demonstrative women's organizations determined to seize any means, take any step to wipe out this scourge. These women are conducting fact-finding surveys, surveys that show a startling correlation between the stock market fluctuations of 29, the depression of 29 to 33, and the amazing skyrocketing rise in donut consumption through the years elapsed since. Truly the problem seems incapable of solution. And still the worst is not yet in sight. Even as America awaits the opening gun in the battle of suppression, engineers are busy at their drawing boards, dreaming today of a donut for the atomic age with refinements, attachments, and potentialities that strike new fear into the hearts of Dunking's opponents. The revolutionary super dunk donut of tomorrow. A donut to meet the challenge of the atomic era, the super absorbent atomic donut. The future fills with foreboding. The opposition stands at the crossroads. How will Dunking's enemies meet the challenge? What lies ahead for the donut? What does the future hold for the dunker? 
How will donuts face the challenge of the atomic age? The world speculates and ponders and watches and shivers and trembles as America dumps.